Hi there! It's a bit of a different video for you today. Uh, so instead of focusing on just one build like I normally do over the course of many days, we're going to be focusing on three different builds over the course of one day. Uh, so it's sort of like spending the day in the workshop with me and seeing what I get up to on a typical day. So this is a build only day, there's not going to be any repairs today. I'll probably do more of these videos where there'll be some repairs mixed in with them. Uh, but today we're just focusing on three different builds. Um, so let's take a look at them now. So these are the three projects we're going to be working on this morning. So we've got this one here, which is a 28 and a half inch scale base. So very short scale. And you can see we've got some cool bright colors on this one. And that's because this one is going to a guy who does a lot of animation. He's really into the bright colors and things like that. Uh, so it's going to look really cool when it's done. And this obviously needs carving because at the moment the neck is square. So that's what we're going to be doing later on today. This will be the last job we do this morning. We're carving that. And we're going to move on. This one will be somewhere in between. So we'll do this one in the middle. And this is a six string base. And you can see we've got lots of carbon fiber reinforcement in this one. This is a seven piece neck. Easy to see on the back. Of um, Honjo and Mahogany and Wenge. And then the carbon fiber reinforcement. We've got eight millimeter here, either side. And we've got some finer stuff here, but it actually goes quite deep into the neck. It's 10 millimeter deep. And then dual action truss rod. And we've also got a sand the um, headstock overlays here because these aren't obviously trimmed to the neck yet. So we're going to sand them flush as well. It's going to be one of the jobs we do. And then we're going to get the fretboard attached to it. And this is our Wenge fretboard also. You can see it's got some nice trigger in here. And this has been inlaid with a vine um, tree of life. Uh, so I'm going to do this a little bit different to what I normally would because it's flat at the moment. Normally I would start with the radius fretboard, uh, so we're going to be gluing it flat and then radiusing afterwards. Uh, we're not going to get to the radiusing today, it's just going to be gluing the fretboard on. And then the first job we're going to do is this guitar neck here, which is a Sapili neck with a Panga fretboard. And it's got these power dots, and it's also got a H on the headstock for the initial of the guy it's going to. Uh, so this is a separate head plate which isn't glued on yet, and that's what we're going to do this morning. And in between the neck and the head plate, we're going to have this piece of maple veneer as well, so we get kind of a, a layered effect on it. So that's going to be the first job we do, we're going to glue this head plate on. So the first thing I want to do is wipe down these surfaces with some alcohol, uh, just to make sure there's nothing that's going to stop the glue sticking. Uh, you can see I've got these screws here, uh, which are currently in, and these are just to index everything and hold everything in place as the glue, well, as the clamps go on. I'm just going to get those out of the way for now. Uh, so I need to wipe all three of these surfaces, this one, this one, and this one, to make sure there's nothing sticking to it. You can see there's some, quite a bit of dust uh, on this one. And ebony's an oily wood, so it could well have uh, some oil on there, which might prevent the glue from working. So I'm just using some isopropyl alcohol. alcohol. I'm just going to wipe them all down. We'll do the ebony first and I'll show you. Did you see any of that oil I was talking about? Nah, it's not too much. Sometimes you get like a yellowy colour. There's a little bit there. Uh, but sometimes you can get this kind of strong yellow, which is oil from the wood. I'm going to use a clean piece for the other two. I don't want to get the maple veneer too wet uh, because it might warp it a bit. There's not much water in isopropyl alcohol, but there is a little tiny bit, which could be enough to kind of warp the veneer a little bit. And you can see that was quite dusty. So they're ready to go once this alcohol's evaporated. So we're about ready to go with this. Uh, you can see, as I mentioned about the veneer, having a tendency to warp when you wipe it down. Uh, you can see there's a little bit of that in there, uh, more than a little bit, but it doesn't actually matter because it flattens easily enough. It just makes it a little bit more difficult to deal with when it's got a bit of a curl on it like that. But we can just clamp this down, it'll be no problem at all. 
Uh, so first I'm going to put the glue onto this headstock face. And I'm going to be using Type Bond Original, which is the one I like the most. Uh, out of the other Type Bonds because it doesn't creep as much as the others do. So creep is when you have a kind of the glue stretches uh, with humid humidity and things like that. It can actually, um, the glue joints themselves move. Uh, but Type Bond doesn't do that so much. Epoxy does it even less. Uh, but for this, we just need ordinary Type Bond. So I'm trying not to put too much on because we don't want it running everywhere. So we just want a thin layer on every piece. I'll often mask off the truss rod um, access there. Uh, but I haven't done this time, uh, so I'm just going to be careful and not put too much glue on. Because the idea is afterwards, after everything's set and I've trimmed the head plate to the headstock, I will actually need to cut into this recess to be able to access the truss rod. So I'll need to cut a recess through the head plate. So at that time I can clean up any glue. So it's not overly important that I mask or don't. And again, this type bond will warp this veneer because the veneer is so thin. And when it gets wet, it'll move. And there's obviously water in type bond. So things like epoxy and super glues and things like that, they don't have water in. But uh, type bond and high glue, or this type of glue, have water in. Yeah, so, so that's worth remembering when you're doing certain types of jobs when you don't want to introduce water into it. But for this, it doesn't matter. So I can see we've got a very thin layer on that. And then I'm going to just roughly align this with the two indexing holes, which is about there. And I'll put more glue on here because you'll see this one will curl up. You can see it's trying to do it now, lifting. Uh, so if I wet this side as well, that'll keep it more even. So some people will say you only put glue on uh, one surface rather than both, uh, which can work as well. Um, but the advantage of the advantage of doing it on one surface instead of two is that you have less. Uh, it slides out less on the glue whatever you're gluing down doesn't move about so much because there's not so much glue there. Um, but then obviously the downside is you may have areas which are starved of glue. So I always like to do both. Um, and also because I'm using indexing pins, it doesn't matter that things slide about because they hold it in place. So I'm going to put a bit more on this than the other pieces because I don't have to worry about the truss of access and I don't have to worry about it warping so much because it's a thicker piece of wood. And I can definitely make sure this piece is got glue on every bit. It's not a particularly warm morning here, because um, it's February. Uh, so I don't have to worry about this setting off too quick. I've got quite a lot of time. But what it does have, the tight bond, is a strong initial tack. Uh, so when you put this down, it's quite difficult to reposition. Um, so you want to make sure you get it right the first time. It's these two holes here I'm going to be using. I'm going to take some lining up now. Okay, that one's in. I think that one is too. So I've got both the screws done up on there now. And these are just going to be in temporarily until I get a couple of clamps in. Then I can remove them to allow more space for clamps. Uh, so I'm going to put little cords on either side to make sure I don't damage anything as I clamp. And I'll put a couple of clamps on here now to hold it in place. So these are just scrap pieces of MDF I'm using. Um, I have a habit of just keeping just about every off cut because they always come in useful, especially ones with square edges because you can use them for writing templates then. So now I've got these two Hair clamps on. I can take the screws out because it's not going to go anywhere. And this will allow me to use uh, a call which covers the whole headstock. So, 
as one here. And then I can just get some clamps on there. And that'll be the job done. So I've added all my clamps now. Uh, probably looks like overkill, uh, but there's really no such thing when it comes to clamping with wood glue. You can't add too many clamps, the more the better. Keeps everything nice and flat and distributes the pressure. And you can see we've got some squeeze out just there, uh, which is a good sign, but it's not so much that it's all running everywhere. Um, because if you had, actually add too much glue on jobs like this, when you're clamping under veneer, you can end up with actually kind of mounds of glue in there, which can't escape. Uh, so it's always better not to use too much when it's, you're doing something like this. Uh, so we can go on to our next job now. So I've got my bobbin sander set up now. Uh, it's hooked up to the dust extraction as well, so there shouldn't be too much dust going about. And I'm just going to use this size bobbin here to get it up in here, all around the corners, and just get this all nice and flush with the edge. There's about two or three millimetres extra around the edge. See it's looking a lot better now. Uh, this is a bit of a few little rough edges still, so I'm going to just do these by hand and sort those out now. So I'm going to can, can use a hand sanding block, or you can also use a scraper like this, which works really nicely and leaves a nice finish. So I'm going to leave this one here now and move on to the glue and the fretboard on. So another small job I'm going to do is cut for the truss rod access here. Uh, I mentioned it when we were doing the guitar neck, uh, that I would have to do that on tomorrow. Uh, but for this one, we're at that stage already. Uh, so I'm gonna cut the access here before I glue the fretboard on, just because it makes it a bit easier to have access to this. I'll be able to use my Dremel base on this without bumping into the edge of the fretboard, which would be here if it was already glued on. Uh, so it makes sense to do that now. So what I was doing then with the drill was just drilling a series of holes. Uh, to gain access into this. Uh, I know when to stop because I know how long the route was in the first place. So I've drilled that many holes along there. And then now I'm just going to clean this up with the Dremel and chisels. So that's that bit done now. So now we can move on to gluing the fretboard down. So I've just clamped this in place now. I've got a couple of indexing pins, one down here, and then there's one up here behind this clamp, just there. And so this is kind of a dry clamp of it, so this is the exact position it will end up in. Uh, so now I can trim away some of the waste. So I've marked this on the back side, might just be able to see a pencil line there. I'm not going to go right up to the line, but I'm going to trim some of the excess off just because it gets in the way of the clamps. Uh, so it'll be easier to just have it out the way and trim it a bit smaller. It needs to be done anyway. Uh, so that's what we're going to do now trim the board down a bit, and then after that it'll be gluing time. So here it is trimmed now. You'll notice I've also added a third pin just for a bit of added security because it was a tiny, moving a tiny bit before, just a little, like probably half a millimetre either way, where well, it's not moving at all anymore. Uh, so that way I can be sure it's going to stay put. I'm actually going to be using epoxy for this one, rather than ordinary tight bond. Uh, that's because I've got so much carbon fibre in this neck, uh, the wood glue won't stick to this. Um, so if I use epoxy, epoxy will stick to the carbon fibre and to the fretboard, and so then we'll end up with more gluing surface, which will mean a stronger joint. Obviously epoxy is extremely strong as well, uh, so that's, it also adds even more strength than wood glue would. And also it doesn't introduce any water into the fretboard, which is a good thing. Because uh, then if you introduce water, you can end up with swelling and things like that. Yeah, so it's, that's an added benefit, but that's not really the reason I'm doing it. The reason I'm doing it is for the carbon fibre, so I'll stick to that. Um, and normally, I would use a couple of these down either side of the net, and these work well when it's a radius fretboard. Uh, so you can have one on that side and one on the other, and then I'd add clamps at the top of these. And that spaces out the clamping pressure and gives it nice even force on it. Uh, but this time I'm not going to do that, uh, just because these inlays aren't quite flush. Uh, so if I end up putting one of those big coils down here and applying a lot of clamping pressure to it, it could in theory crack them. If there's any kind of void underneath, it could crack the inlay, and that would be a shame. So we're going to play it safe and just use individual clamps spaced out where there isn't an inlay. And that way we should be able to avoid any damage and still get a good joint.
So I've just added some masking tape down the sides, uh, just in case any glue gets down there, save me having to clean it up. And I've also covered the back heel in that because they're kind of the only area which is likely to get glue on, which we need uh, to keep intact, because uh, all of this is going to be carved. So I've masked off this, and I'm also going to make sure I use a block on this to protect, the, protect it from the clamps, whereas the back of the neck I'm not really bothered about because it's all going to be cut, cut away anyway when it's carved. And obviously the fretboard I'm not so bothered about the surface of that either because um, that's going to be radius, which will take out any kind of denting from the clamps. Uh, but I probably will use a little piece of veneer like this in between each clamp uh, just to make sure there's no severe denting. Uh, so I've mixed my epoxy already. Uh, this is a West System epoxy. And I'm going to start applying it. And there we go. Again, plenty of clamps, uh, but I haven't done quite so tight as I would have done if it was wood glue, uh, just because epoxy doesn't need that and you can actually force all the glue out uh, if you do that too much, if you put too much pressure on it. Uh, so I'm happy with how that's gone. We had just enough clamps to do this and the headstock we did earlier. Um, so now I'm just gonna give this until tomorrow and then I can take the clamps off. Uh, I've also taken the pins out in the meantime um, because otherwise they could get stuck in there because epoxy will stick to metal and wood. Uh, so they could have got been a pain to get out. So I've taken them out after I had a few clamps on and it wasn't going anywhere. I, I was able to take those out. Uh, so that's this one done for today. So with that neck now in the clamps, we move on to our third job, uh, which is carving this neck. So this is going to be, for me, the most enjoyable job of the day. Because uh, so, I really like carving necks. Uh, so we're going to get on with this in a minute. But first, I think I'll probably enter tea break. So we're moving on to the carving now. I've got the drawing here. This is what I've just drawn up. Uh, so this has got my profile on there and these lines represent facets which have now been drawn onto the neck as you can see here. So it's just a case of carving these facets so the lines join up and then I'll add the secondary facets on these on the edge and on this one here where this line will be carved. Um, so I'm just going to use a variety of tools, uh, the draw knife, uh, Shinto wasp and some files. So we're going to start off with one of my favourite tools, the door knife. Uh, this is a vintage old one made by Solby, uh, which is a very good maker at the time. And it's really sharp. I sharpened it recently, so should have no trouble with this. Uh, if this was figured maple, you may have some little problems with it uh, because of the grain direction can deflect and stuff. But this is fairly uh, flat sawn, plain maple, so it should carve nice and easily. So the draw knife does a great job at these kind of main bits, uh, but you struggle to get it into the smaller areas, like at either end of the neck. Uh, so to do these areas, I often use chisels, which I will do this time also. And to do this bit here, a bit further away from there, I'll use my Shinto wasp, uh, which is just like a bunch of saw blades on a file, basically. Uh, so it's a Japanese idea. And you can see there's lots of teeth, lots of saw blades on that. And then this cut looks really effectively and smoothly as well, so it doesn't leave too, too rough a surface. And that's the rough side, there's a smooth side as well, um, so you can clean up with that after. About as close as I can get with the file. I will do this area with the chisels now. So we're at the other end of the neck where the heel is and I'm just gonna I've done the filing which you just saw there with the Shinto wasp at this end and now I'm just gonna follow up with the chisels. So 
stuff, the treble side of the neck now woofed in, that can go onto the other side now. And then I'll put in secondary facets and carve those, and then there'll be a lot of sanding at the end. So now I've drawn in the secondary facets, you can see them here. So it's that line there and that line there, and I've connected them with this kind of zizzy line just to make sure I can see where they are easily. And I've also cut it, um, drawn in the ones on the side as well, on the fretboard edge, these facets here. So first I'm going to carve these ones, then I'll carve those. So that's that uh, secondary facet now carved. Uh, so I'm just going to do the same to that one now. So all the facets are now carved. You should be able to just see the high points here. This is where the facets were carved up to. So it's just a case now of smoothing off these high points and making them join the shape of the neck. And then we'll be left with our profile. So to get those high spots, I'm just going to use a file like this and just kind of roll them over. And after I've done this, I'll move on to sanding with coarse paper, 80 grit. Uh, use like a shoot shine, like that. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do after this bit. But I'm just going to start with the file because the file tends to keep things a bit more true. And I've got a bit more control over it. That's the profile now carved. I've just sanded it up to 80 grit, so it's a lot more sanding to go. Uh, but the basic shape's now there. Uh, it feels really comfy. It's nice and smooth. Uh, so I'm going to leave the video there now for today. But I'm actually going to pick up the camera again tomorrow morning so you can see the guitar headstock that we glued up earlier with the inlay on. Uh, so you can, I'll trim that down so you can see how it's going to look when it's a finished guitar. So it's the next day now, and here's the headstock we glued up yesterday. I've just trimmed it back, just like I did on the bass neck piece when we do. And then I've also drilled the tune holes as well. Uh, the observant among you will be thinking you haven't done the dress rod access. As I mentioned on the other neck, it's much easier to do before the fretboard's on. Uh, that's because with this neck, I actually didn't realise I was going to do a ebony top plate, head plate on it. Uh, it was originally just going to be the natural, same as the back. Uh, but then I thought an ebony head plate would look really nice, and then I could put a nice inlay on it as well. Um, so I've got to cut the access after, which it's not a huge deal, it just makes it easier if the fretboard isn't in the way. And you can see the layering on the side, which makes a nice effect with this scarf joint I've got here. So you can see I've got the black and white going through there, and then the black and white here as well. And they both kind of point in the same direction. This necklace is not carved yet, this will obviously look different once it is. Uh, but we'll still have those lines going up there. Uh, it's a good glue up, there's no gaps or anything like that, really nice and tight. Uh, so that's a job well done. And that's all for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please do leave me a like and don't forget to subscribe to see more content like this. And uh, leave me a comment to let me know what you think about this kind of new video format which you've been doing, which is, you know, spending the day in the workshop with me rather than focusing on one project. Let me know if you'd like to see more of those. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next one.